Heyo, welcome everyone to episode 33 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this is my co-host Dylan from Galactic Battleground. What up? This week we're going to explore an arcade out of West Virginia. Um, we're actually bringing a guest back in that spoke on uh, what it's like to be a coin operator in the past. Chris Myers, how are you doing today? Hey brother, how's you guys doing? We're good, we're good. Um, so... I just want to remind everybody that we upload an episode every Friday. Um, you can find us on YouTube as well as the podcast. If you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, definitely subscribe and follow along. So I wanted to bring you on and talk today about your specific arcade business, uh, which is Starport. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to jump right into questions. All right. So it's been a little while since you've featured on the show, Chris. I just want you to reintroduce yourself, let people know about you, and kind of let us know what you've been up to since the last time we spoke. I am Chris Myers. I own Starport Arcade and Pub, and then I own a route across uh, West Virginia, um, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Maryland, touch on Kentucky, and now we just started a new operation in Virginia. So we are... um, in all those, I guess it's six states now. I got to get used to saying that. But so I route games, everything that takes coins, um, jukeboxes, pool tables, dartboards, you name it. We do it. And of course, indie games. So we do those also. We have those at a lot of space, uh, spaces. And uh, I don't know, man. That's about it, really. I think right now we're just kind of seeing what's going to happen here. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> So with Starport Arcade, what is your history in the arcade space, and like, how did you get started? Well, I mean, it's it's that's a great question actually, because it's interesting how we started. So, I remember uh, a buddy of mine he used to come to. We had a prequel kind of to Starport, and it was called the Bradish Street Pinball Parlor, and it was a door with like a key code, and it was a private club just for people that knew me. Like, we didn't. If it started off as just like a membership only like if you know if you knew me you can get in there if you didn't know me you couldn't get in there and then we started like charging for membership and 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 a couple guys came up from west virginia and was like man you should put something like this in west virginia and i was like well you know we've done atm work in west virginia but we never actually did any arcades there um just in like bowling centers and stuff like that was more like ticket redemption focus it wasn't like retro arcade so you know one of the gentlemen joined up in the club and he was consistently there like three days a week and he lived like two and a half hours away. So he, he called me one, one afternoon and was like, dude, there's this bar and they're willing to lease us their basement. And it's like an easy in and out. It's like, it's like ground level kind of in and out. Would you be willing to put some pinballs there and I'll start a pinball league in, in Morgantown? And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I had like a huge surplus of pinball machines, so it wasn't no sweat. And that was like the very beginning of Starport. Like then we had, you know, we had about a 30 member league, but just people were playing the games at that location like crazy. Like the owner of the business went from saying, well, like basically you can have the space. We don't care to like he wanted paid for it. And like he was seeing too much traffic. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to do all that, we need a bigger space. So we our first space we leased in Morgantown was about. I want to say it was like 2,500 square feet and we filled it with arcade games and and pinball machines. And and at that point we knew that demand was like there, like we had people showing up. We were open three days a week and we were crowded every one of those days. So then that's when I was like, okay, I need to have a liquor license. I need to have a kitchen. I need to do it like legitimately. And I did some research, went in the bar nightclub show that year went to a couple food industry shows so I could, you know, really dial in the product. I knew the arcade business, but I wasn't really, you know, and I know how to like do the math on the other, like any business really like how to actually figure out when I'm profitable and things like that. But at the end of the day, it was like, I didn't know how to actually run those businesses. So I did some training for myself while we still had that, that second location. And then the starport that uh, everyone knows now, Um, that was the one that, you know, we found a space that was, uh, roughly 8,000 square feet or so. And it was just the right fit for us at that time. Like, you know, we had, we could bring in some of the bigger games that we'd like to have at sites like that, or the amount of pinballs we'd like to have, or, or the indie games that we would like to have, you know, when we were space limited, you know, the choices are a little bit harder, but then, 
you know, we had a bigger space, a full size kitchen that was a three man operation in the kitchen. And then, you know, and then we had three bars built in that space too. So there was like three serving bars, you know, I mean, on a, on a, on a full night at Starport, I think the staff is like 18 or something like that. So 16, like, I mean, you could have up to 16 people on a busy night working. So it was like, you know, that's like on a shift when they change shifts, you could have, you know, more than that work in a given day, but I'm talking about on a night shift, you would have that many people. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a pretty big operation. I haven't made it out there yet. Um, I really wanted to, but just didn't line up. Um, I'm curious about the name. Um, I know the name is always something big with a lot of arcades and some people have crazy stories. Do you guys have a crazy story as to like how you came up with the name Starport or was it just a, a good name? Well, so I think it's a good name, but there is a crazy story behind it actually. Um, so there was an operator in the state of West Virginia. So when I started researching what we were going to call the arcade, um, I was uh, looking at, you know, some previous arcades that were there in the eighties and things like that. There was an operator named Rusty Smith from, uh, from Morgantown. I think he actually lived just outside of Morgantown, but somewhere in Monongalia County where, where Morgantown is that had an arcade called spaceport. So Dylan, when you said that earlier, I laughed. I'm like, what? You know, like he actually called it what the previous one was called. So I contacted Rusty because I thought it was important, like as an operator to say, hey, we'd really like to pay homage to what you did in the 80s and early 90s in Morgantown. I'd love to call it Spaceport. I'd love to like, um, you know, you know, bring back some of that, you know, nostalgia to the arcade. You know, we were doing it as we set it up as really like a retro arcade. So um, and at that time he was like, well, you have to talk to my son. He's not really in vending. And, you know, I don't know. So we called the guy. He had like no interest in letting us do that. So then I was like, well, you know, I, I thought I was doing it for all the right reasons. So I kind of went back to the drawing board and I started to like, just draw up a logo, like, you know, just on paper. Like I had a million sheets of paper scatter, scatter all over my desk. And eventually like I saw the one I liked and I miswrote one and it was like Starport. And I was like, that's what I'm going to call it because it's like the next generation of spaceport is like the starport. So, you know, and that's where I got the name from. So like, but lo and behold, you know, my friends tell me I was a Warcraft three player for RTS. And my friends were like, starport's a thing in a, in a, in a, um, in, in Starcraft. And I was like, well, the name came completely from a different, you know, lineage. So uh, ultimately that's where we got the name from. And I think it's a good story because I did try to reach out and me and the operator of that location are actually still friends, but we're just, we couldn't come to an agreement on the, the name spaceport. So we called it starport. That's really interesting on how you came up with the name starport. Um, what sets starport from other arcades and pubs in the area? So, I mean, we're the only full scale arcade you know, we've had several competitors come into our space there. They've never really lasted just because I think that ultimately, even pre-COVID, a lot of these people went out because, I mean, they don't, I don't think they get what it takes to actually have like a full operation like that. Like someone came in and put an arcade in the mall, but it didn't have like, you know, any food or any, any like seating or anything. So, I mean, but like what really separates us is like, I mean, everything that's new that comes out, we get, I mean, we scaled it to that level. Like, you know, I mean, to give you an idea, like there's a new version of Mario Kart that's coming out, like whether they're already ordered for Starport, you know, or, um, <clears throat> you know, and everything that like we, you know what we do. I mean, we've talked about it. Like, you know, we want games like Galactic Battleground or Cosmotrons or, or some of the games that you don't see in 90% of arcades i mean you know we we had those games to kind of set us apart from really not just regionally but like i mean the next closest uh operator to have some of these games is in either columbus or you'd have to even go into like chicago you know logan hardware has some of these games like some of the best absolute best arcades in the world have these games so i mean we like to consider ourselves in that same like you know line of thinking there is really um, I th and I think that's what separates it. I mean, we had a great, we had really, really good food. There's no doubt. Like, I mean, you know, people would come there just to eat people that were non-arcade enthusiasts and, and, um, 
some of the things that, that those are those are some of the main points that separated us out from from really anybody that was around us you know i mean there wasn't there wasn't there wasn't ever really an arcade that was like a full scale like that had like everything from a vector game to the brand new um you know whatever the newest raw thrills game was or whatever the newest namco product was i mean we had all that stuff in our inventory at starport so you kind of touched on like the idea of what games you have and some of the indies you have Mm -hmm. um can you go in depth as to like what games you had on the floor like what people could expect if they came there like what specific fighting games and classics and indies you guys actually had out yeah i mean usually we had a good rotation of uh like so if we just go by genre like the fighting games really we had a good fighting game community with the college at wvu so um some of those guys would reach out to me and say hey there's no way you have this or this or this and i'll say give me a week you know because i i usually had that those those games but <clears throat> those games have been in storage for a while. So, I mean, you know, we pretty much touched on just about every version of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, you know, King of Fighters, a lot of the Neo Geo fighting games. You know, we, we had all those Samurai Showdown, everything. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that we've probably com- had someone compete on or had present at the arcade just about every version of Street Fighter just about every version of Mortal Kombat. I mean, oh, I can guarantee you every version of Mortal Kombat. There's so many versions of Street Fighters, you know, that are Japan only or whatever that I may not have had there. But, like, I mean, everything from Third Strike to the the original Champion Edition. I mean, you know, so... Um, <clears throat> and that's for the fighting genre. I mean, you know, and then, you know, some of the other things, like we had Killer Instinct, we had, you know, but those games didn't have as much lasting power with the fighting community as, like, you know, Street Fighter could last there for like a good four months, they'd go through like a couple, you know, tournaments on those games. And, you know, then they would say, Hey, can we get there? And it was great because we had a couple big blue cabinets there. It was just like plug in JAMA and then wham, you went from third strike to alpha two or whatever they decided they wanted to compete on. So having access to a lot of those boards, I collected all that stuff over the years. So, and then, so driving games, I mean, we had four player Mario Kart. That's an absolute winner. Uh, any operator listening to this podcast, if you own the site, I know it's crazy when you look at that payment for Mario Kart. It's like they're like they're like twelve thousand dollars a unit, but that game was absolutely just a monster earner. It just, I mean, and it kept people in my location several hours beyond their imaginable time because people just love Mario Kart. So that was like, without a doubt. That was the top earning um, and, and, and top played just in general. Like if we had a free play night, there'd be a line to play four player Mario Kart. Namco, make an eight player Mario Kart. I will buy it and put it somewhere. I can guarantee you, even if it's at my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like the kids, everyone loves Mario Kart. Um, yeah, we had Cruisin' Blast two player. We had um, Super Bikes three two player. We had um, Super Cars two player. We had Geez, I don't want to miss any of these. We had uh, Nitro Trucks, two-player. Those are all Raw Thrills products. I'm trying to think if we had anything else from Namco for a racer. You know, no, not really. I mean, we did for a very brief amount of time. We had Daytona 3 from Sega, but it wasn't really well-received. Well but that was our current Our current floor was the ones I just went over. I think we had H2 Overdrive there as well. I don't want to forget that. I think we had H2 Overdrive also. So, and then shooting games, we had House of the Dead, Scarlet Dawn. We had four-player Halo, Fireteam Raven. We had, um, let's see, Alien, Aliens Armageddon. We had a, an original House of the Dead at a re- or user request. So we tried to honor those. Believe it or not, guys, a lot of people would contact me uh, through, like, the Facebook app or email and saying, Man, I'd love to see Site 4, Area 51. So we would try to put those games there where we could fit them in. Uh, Pre-COVID, it was no problem. Post-COVID, or like, well, not post, during current COVID situation, we had to pull back some of our, some of our inventory just because we had to distance the games. We had to, you know, eliminate two-player games. We had the we really spread out Mario Kart in a way with, with, uh, with um, you know, plexiglass to you know, adhere to some of the guidelines set forth by the CDC or our local representation. Um, but as I was shooting games, I'm trying to think what else we had. We had Big Buck Hunter Reloaded. That's really another one, operators. If you're if you're looking to 
place a game that's not going to take up a giant footprint like Mario Kart and uh, plays online, can see earnings online, game changes online, there's constantly being updated and, and things like that. The new Big Buck Hunter Reloaded is absolutely geared toward what we're trying to do. There's multiple games on it. It's just not shooting deer anymore. Most people in these game in the arcade don't want to shoot deer, but they like shooting zombies. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like Walking Dead was there. Um, Jurassic Park Sit Down was there, like the uh, the new Raw Thrills version. Then we had like Ski Ball Lanes. We had um, Lane Master Bowling, which was like um, kind of like a spinoff of both virtual and physical play bowling. Um we had super kicks, which is like um, kind of like super checks, but it's soccer. It's a little bit bigger of a playing field. The game plays a little faster than checks. We had a super checks that was Marvel versus DC themed. I had someone come in and repaint the figures. And, you know, the captain was Wonder Woman versus Captain America at the face off. And so you had Thor going up against the Green Lantern or, you know, it was pretty neat. We, we did a, a full like Superman and Batman versus like Iron Man and, and uh you know black panther so we had a really cool themed one of a kind uh super checks there um what else we had a couple air hockey tables um had dart boards and then we had a i mean we had probably the best pinball selection in uh in west virginia i think we had the last uh nine stern pinball releases in limited edition form we had Willy Wonka. We had Pirates of the Caribbean. We had um, the new Guns N' Roses from Jersey Jack. We had Rick and Morty. We had Alice Cooper Nightmare Castle. We had Total Nuclear Annihilation. I mean, we had a big space. You know, I'm just trying to go over, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure, guys, I'm missing some. I'm not actually looking at an inventory list. I'm going off the top. So, um, but yeah, we had a v- huge inventory. I mean, very little redemption products in there, just like claw machines or stackers and stuff like that. But not like we were not an FEC. We were not like a a kitty casino, basically. We were like more geared towards adults and bar and eating food. And, you know, so does that answer your question pretty good? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, In regards to your collection that you have at Starport, um, what do you think about the indie scene for like the indie arcade guys? And what are people doing right now and how can they improve? Well, so the indie scene, like what I want to say is during COVID, it was the hardest thing because we couldn't really have like four player games. And one of the biggest problems I have, so like some of the updates we did, the Galactic Battleground, I loved it. Cosmotron loved it. But like we couldn't make it a one player game or socially distance the cabinet. So we couldn't actually have it. You know, like as you can see, I didn't name games like Ninja Turtles or Injustice or things like that because they're two player games that we really can't separate. So you know, just following the guidelines. What I think really is, I think you guys are on the right path. I mean, we've talked about it before, but it's like interaction between players, like camaraderie. People like to see things they can understand quickly. Like, you know, if you play your friend at a game and you beat him, it tells you like, you know, how bad you beat him or something like that. Kind of like gives you a rub it in thing. One of the cool things I think about, uh, there's a, if you've ever played Pac-Man Battle Royale, like the four player Pac-Man, when the one person, whoever wins, the other people, if you hit the start button during the screen where it's explaining like that they, they won, it'll it'll allow you to splat them with like paint, like throw paint at them. My kids love that. That's like the thing that everybody looks forward to is like, you know, shame in the winner, basically. So, um, you know, those are things I think if we can think of creative ways to uh, get more interaction between the players, that would be the way to go. I mean, I think that's, you know, I love the fact that you, you did a four player game, you know, and and, you know, but really it's crazy to say this. I mean, Bumble Bear did a great job with um, Black Emperor. I mean, I I can't stop playing that game still today right now. I mean, like I want to go play it and it's a single player thing, but it's more about like putting up a score. And then so I guess there's different ways to skin the cat here, but like. I think that like you're on the right path with like some of the things we've been doing, like, you know, um, player interaction, uh, player, like, you know, cooperative playing. I mean, Galactic has all that, you know what I mean? Now, like if the pace was sped up a little bit, I think that it would be, you know, or, or, um, you know, in some of the other games, if 
the controls weren't so difficult for beginners, you know, things like that. There's a little, there's a couple small things that could be changed about some of those indie games, but like really the concepts are all where I think they should be. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah. I mean, we definitely agree and we take feedback really well about the games and how we can improve them. Um, and I, I'm with you. I think all the games are really fun and they have their own element. And some are single player, some are four player, some are two player, some you can play all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, some are, some are 10 player, <laughs> yeah. you know, so they yeah. give you a lot of depth. Um, I guess my next question for you, we kind of briefly touched on it beforehand, um, but how are you guys combating the closures right now? And what tips do you have for other arcades that are struggling? Yeah, I mean, so... Tips on, 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 you know, how we try to, so first of all, if you're only an arcade and that's your sole business, you're going to have a rough go of it. Luckily, you know, I'm a route operator. We do ATM work. We do, we do things that are like, I was condemned or I was told I was an essential business in all five States because, you know, financials considered essential. But, um, you know, if you're only an arcade owner, I mean, you know, please get out on social media. Don't go dark. Like, we went dark just because we didn't, I don't actually, we didn't actually need, you know, we were trying to help other arcades out. So, I mean, everybody that's reached out to me in the arcade scene, you already know the answer to this question. But if you, on social media, if you were saying, hey, we're selling gift cards, I bought a gift card, or try to keep your customers engaged. Maybe they can't enter your space right now, but try to keep your customers engaged. You know, I see some people putting up like uh, GoFundMes and things like that. And, you know, I've never considered it, but like, and if that's the way to go, that's great. If you think that that's the way, but I would say like offer your customers something to come back because, you know, the hardest thing about this is we kind of like opened and closed and opened and closed several times, like bringing your customer back whenever you haven't engaged them and through social media or online in some manner, they almost forget about you temporarily and that can hurt your bottom line. So like think of ways to engage them. You know, we did a lot of cool things, I think, at Starport at the end to meet like our um, our COVID criteria. One of the things was um, one of the gals that works with us set up a website. It was like, look, you can book a time, you can book book a group. And once we get to that 25%, we close it out. But like, it's a package. So like you came in and for 25 bucks, you got two hours of free play. You got a pizza and your table was reserved six feet apart from everybody. So like it was, we got creative about what we were offering the people. So we offered them free play. We offer like as at a group discount rate. We and then and then their 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 uh, time purchase also included like beverages and and um and food. So all that could get ready prepped. We basically like say you ordered, you could have four Coronas. You had you had them on your table when you got there. They were in ice, and both. so it was like pretty streamlined, and that helped us build up some uh, some uh, actual funding. You know, what I mean, like we made some money those days because it was prepaid. Like people, then we like we routed it up and said, "Get excited to come back. We got here's our selection for the day. Here's your food options. You could just go boom, drop down, da 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 da, paid." And then that helped us keep our employees paid. You know, through all this because I mean. Really, that's the other side of it is you have to try to keep, you know, we wanted to keep our staff. We loved our staff at Starport. And the the best way to do that was to try to find some prepayment on something that people can get excited about. You know, I mean, so th- those are my tips, like keep engaging your customer. Know that your marketing is just as important as your, you know, as anything, especially going through this, keeping your relevancy in your community you know, a lot of these arcades, we formed a great bond with our locals. Like, let's keep engaging our locals. Let's keep engaging the people that want to be a part of what we're doing. You know, and then a lot of people, myself included, we want to keep these places going. I mean, you know, I'm a firm believer in the rising tide raises all these ships. You know, I don't think if I had a competitor next door to me, it didn't really matter to me. I was thinking it was better because maybe he can draw in different people that would then want to visit our establishment and vice versa. So, I mean, but I, I would say I can't stress it enough. I mean, if you're not a member of the IAAPA or the AMOA, you should become a member because they really kind of like, when I woke up depressed about COVID, I would read their newsletter and it would be like, get on social media and be positive. And I would be like, I would go from being doom and gloom to eating my Wheaties and being like, this is going to be okay. You know, and, and that's a mindset thing, you know, 
part of the social media and have engagement in social media through your own mindset can help. Like it's, I, I really believe, I, I really believe that that was like the key to us, like kind of feeling better about our scenario at Starport. And I think it helped push a real, um, made a real financial push for people to want to support us for going the extra mile, doing things that were, you know, COVID friendly and yet con- conscious to some of the guidelines and regulations. I mean, you know, and then, and then of course they got some people that probably would have never tried our food. It was part of the package. We actually gained customers that were ordering food to go and things like that, you know, so, but that would be what that in a nutshell, anyhow. Gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, along the lines of, you know, battling with COVID and doing all these hoops and ladders through the CDC and, you know, guidelines and stuff like that. Is there any other projects that you're currently involved on or working on at the moment? Some super duper projects, actually. One is cannot be discussed currently, but I'm not trying to pitch you to get me on the show for a third time. But when this system goes live, I think you should we should talk about it. If nothing else, um, you know, I keep myself busy. You know, I ended up buying a food truck to uh, to try to keep funding coming in for some of our employees. You know, we um, we we did a lot of different things. I mean, guys, I'm involved in too much. You know, I, coming home before I got on, got on with you, I was telling my wife, I, I said, listen, I think I should go to four projects. You know what I mean? So like we could spend a whole other show asking me about projects. But no, I mean, really, you know, I wanted to start a food truck. Cause I wanted to like, that's all part of like our, our, um, our brand at Starport is like, you know, we have really good food. We're not known for like the, the, the crappy college kid food. Like people, we had adults coming in and saying, I love eating here. I, I, I love like, you know, we hand breaded everything or, you know, we made pizza from scratch. We did our own dough. We did. So, so I was, I'm, I'm just exploring the things. So whenever like things start to normalize, and we don't have to jump through those hoops again. Like a vaccine gets out there. It has a high effective rate. People want to come back out. Because I think people, like, I think part of what COVID did is, like, got you so used to being in your house. Like, even myself. I'm essential. So I had to go out and fix, like, ATMs and things like that. But I wasn't I wasn't in the arcades anymore. I wasn't, like, you know, we, we collected up a lot of the locations that were, like, well, we're shutting down until further notice. And, you know, I wasn't. So then even I was like kind of getting used to being home at like five o'clock. And I'm like, this is weird. Like I only got up at nine and I'm home at five. Like what's happening. But, um, you know, I think when things start to normalize, my goal was to focus on how can I improve my product for like our new location or our next location or really kind of refine the business plan, um, to, you know, be more effective at my job, you know, because part of the things that I wasn't as effective at before I had some attention to detail. We had people that were detail oriented in, um, in different sectors of our business, but like as a whole, you can't be as effective as you want to be working 14 to 16 hours a day, six days a week. So one, some of the things I thought in my own head is like, how can I refine some of the processes? How can I make my job easier so I can pay attention to more detail oriented aspects of my business you know, and how do I streamline those, those processes to make a better end result for the customer? You know, that's really, I mean, you guys know, I told you, I go to the bar and nightclub show. I go to the food show in Nashville. I go to, I want to make sure that I am doing the things that are trending up. Like, I don't want to be the business that's just doing the same thing every week after week after week. You know, if you go back and look at some of the promotions we've had at Starport, some of them are crazy. I mean, you know, we had, drunken disney sing-along where we had drinks that were themed with nemo and in in a, you drank out of a fishbowl that had nerds as is uh you know the gravel under in the fish tank and we had gummy fish swimming in there and you know we did a lot of real promotional things that were original ideas and and the, our best ideas came from myself and other employees just being able to have a think tank where we could sit down and just let's dream up pie in the sky ideas and we're going to pick one of them every freaking month and we're going to do it. We're going to execute it the next month. So that's where that came from. I mean, we did we did like a spinoff of Jeopardy that was great. We did the uh, the drunken spelling bee. What I mean, if, if, if guys out there that own these arcades want to do something 
it's an event night, once things go back. Those are all great ideas. People absolutely loved it. I mean, I so, you know, that's what I've been doing is trying to refine some of the ideas, concentrate, take time, still talk to the staff about when we do, you know, get back to capacity, how we can focus on some of our better events and how to do those better, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, some of those ideas are hilarious and awesome. I mean, I, I think a drunk Disney sing along could be absolutely comical. Like Dude. as as a witness, it would be so funny. Dude, it well, it was it becomes like you just you it's a it's a mixture of people. The greatest part about the drunken Disney sing along specifically is that you had people that would probably never cross paths in life. Arcade people, Disney people, karaoke people that were all just having I mean the the times that we had with that were amazing and 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 the drinks and the and the marketing and everything that went with it. It was just such a great time. I mean, honestly, I think we did six of those total in 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 about three years at that, that current Starport. And man, it was such a hit that it would sell out. Like people would get upset because we only had so much capacity for it. And it would be like, why well, how come you can't have that? I mean, we would sell out like 250 people on this, like in uh, like instantly like it, i would just see bing, 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 my register would just have all this money in it before we opened you know or before like a month before the event people were really pumped about it so you know that was a cool event you know i i have video somewhere i'll have to send it to you of me i hosted the drunken spelling bee once i was the actual host like and it was uh it was great man there was a lot of camaraderie there and and um and and, and, and just some really really funny you know, asking funny words or giving funny sentences to describe the word, you know, you know, we did it like a spelling bee. Like if you ask, like, can you use it in a sentence? What's the definition? You know, what's the country of origin for the word? All those things we, we did, but they were like funny words. So like sometimes it would be like, I don't know what the country of the origin is. You don't know how to spell it. What are you talking about? You know? So there was some banter between me and, and the spellers and I don't know. And then like every round you passed, you know, we were able to uh, discount you a drink very 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 small discount like meaning you would pay very little for the drink so then it made the the show very interesting at the end it was a very good time (laughs) yeah it sounds sounds fun i'd love to see that video um before we wrap everything up here i just want you to give uh uh, any shout outs that you have in mind as well as your social media links so people can find you guys yeah um man i want to give a shout out first and foremost as always to to my two guys i'm on the line with here uh you know, without you guys, I wouldn't have had so much fun at some of these events that we've been to. And, and honestly, um, I wouldn't have got so much enjoyment out of some of the games that, that we've purchased from all the great people we've met in the indie scene. So shout out to Galactic Battleground Dylan and, and my boy Joe Wagner here, who is just like, you know, a part of the project. I love it. So thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, the real shout outs go to all, all my people in the struggle right now in the entertainment industry. I mean, all, all our all our uh, guys and gals in the service industry just know that, um, you know, I've done and, and the people locally that know me know I've done absolutely everything I possibly can to try to help ease the burden of your uh, your career. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that this vaccine will, will get out and deployed quickly and we can get back to just enjoying each other's company. So big shout out to everyone in entertainment. Please, let's bring it back huge in 2021. Don't. Don't put your hand in your heads yet. We're going to we're going to do something amazing. I know it. And then, you know, shout out to all my staff, everybody that uh, that's helped me get to where I am, man. Everybody, you guys know who you are. I could go on a really long list, but uh, we're going to come back. It's going to be a huge thing at Starport. Starport's going to be what it was. And 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 I hope that everybody that's uh, been struggling through these hard times is going to just come back in 2021 like like a rocket because we, God knows we need it. So, And then the media links to starportarcade.com uh, is my website. You know, if you, if you go down to the uh, bottom of the page, it's starportarcade.com, you'll see all our media links. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. You know, I um, <clears throat> we haven't graduated to the likes of TikTok and all those things yet, so I guess I got to get on that. I'm talking to market, and I didn't even do that. But, um, you know, just look us up, man. Give us a like. That just shows your support. Like we appreciate it. You know, we always try. To, I, I I literally search Facebook 
in the evenings looking for people that I can like their arcade because I want to show support to the businesses in any way possible. So thanks again, guys. All right. Well, thanks for that. And I definitely will throw those links in the description so you guys can check them out, find them wherever uh, you use social media the most. Um, again, if you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, all that stuff. Um, it helps us out a ton as well as we will be back next week with another episode on Friday. So don't miss that one. Until next time, peace. Peace.